So you get into the first jhana, you experience all of these wonderful states, and you're there for a little while. But eventually your mindfulness slips a little bit. And when it does, you're not in the jhana anymore, you have another hindrance to work with. The hindrance is the thing that is helping you go deeper and deeper into your meditation. It's showing you more and more subtle things about how mind actually does work. See, if you just focus on the breath, you never learn these kind of lessons because your mind becomes absorbed just on the breath. But when you put that extra step of relax, of the tension and tightness, it changes the meditation. And now you start teaching yourself more and more how to be happy. And that's what the Buddha was trying to teach us all along. He was trying to teach us how we can learn to be happy no matter what happens. Okay, I've been talking for a long time. I wanted to ask if there is any questions that you have with what I was saying or any comments, anything like that. Did I understand you to say that thing that you understand is Yes. In every jhana, it goes more and more subtle. When I was practicing vipassana, the big thing that they wanted me to understand was that everything is impermanent, everything is suffering, everything is not self. When I started looking at the experience they said was Nibbana, it was seeing impermanent suffering or not self three or four times in a row very, very quickly, and then you have this blackout. When you get out of this state, then you have the reviewing of all the insight knowledges. Okay? When I started looking in the suttas, it only talked about attaining Nibbana through the understanding of dependent origination. So the end result is not the same. So the understanding that you gain by just adding this one extra step of relaxing, it takes you so much deeper into your practice than you've ever thought that you could get. Did you say that before you relax, you release? Yes. And wouldn't that imply relaxing? No. It has to be intentional observation of the subtle tightnesses that are still there. You have to relax that subtle tightness. And it has to be intentional. Where an awful lot of people are running into problems with the breathing meditation is they say, well, I am tranquil, I am peaceful. But they still have this tension and tightness that they didn't even recognize is there. It has to be intentionally recognizing and you have a definite feeling of expansion when you let go of that tension that's around your brain, you feel your brain just kind of, ah. Now this kind of meditation has more oh wows in it than you've ever thought possible. Because you start to understand how this works and you go, oh wow, I'd never seen that before. This is great. An awful lot of people they practice meditation for 15 years, 20 years, and they become bored with it because they don't feel like they're progressing. It never happens with this kind of meditation that I'm showing you. You have so many new things that you're seeing all of the time that you look forward to go sitting so you can see more. 
and it really turns into a lot of fun. Now that's something I bet you haven't heard before in the same sentence. Meditation and fun. Yeah. So uh, you mentioned when we do meditation, when we have a feeling, we're not trying to... We're not trying to uh, Don't stop the feeling. You can't. Feeling. Just relax into the feeling. Uh, Lovingly accept whatever arises in the present moment. Uh, <coughs> we're not trying to go back to concentration. Uh, one time you release you relax smile come back to your object of meditation if it's still there your mind will go back to it that means that there's a lot of attachment to it there's a lot of identifying with it so do it again you have to develop your patience with this eventually when you finally let go you're going to have an oh wow you're going to have a, oh, isn't that nice? 